Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Helen and today we are going to build a snowman in Blender. This is the snowman that we're going to build and I know it has no uh, mouth or smile but I'm not going to put one because today's video is all about simplicity and um, too much detail like the mouth is not necessary and the mouth is kind of hard to make so we're going to scrap that away. This video is intended for beginners, but no matter what level you're on, you can still follow this video. And without further ado, let's get started. Click on the cube, press X on the keyboard to delete the cube. Next, you are going to press Shift A to create a mesh. We are going to create a UV sphere, so press that. Now we have the sphere. Now let's press the blue arrow to bring it up so that it's just not on the axes. So this will be the body of the snowman and we're going to make three balls. So click press shift D to create a duplicate of the ball. You can also press Z or Z to lock it on the Z axis and you can move it up and down like this. Now we are going to do the same thing as before. We're going to click uh, the sphere. We're going to shift D to duplicate the sphere. We're going to click Z to go up and down and so on. To make the ball smaller, we are going to press S for scale and we're going to scale it down a little bit. Now I'm just adjusting the spheres um, by pressing S for scale and moving them up or down so that I can create like a somewhat of a snowman-like figure. Now the base of the snowman is finished. All we have to do is add the nose, the carrot nose, and the eyes. But before we do that, we have to smoothen our spheres because right now they're really blocky. We need to soften the look. On the right of the screen, there is a properties panel. Go down to the one where there is a wrench, a blue wrench. So at the top here, it says add modify. You're going to click that. And remember to click a sphere before you click the add modifier. There are a lot of modifiers for you to choose from, but we're going to look at the one where it says subdivision surface modifier. As you can see on our viewport, the sphere is a lot smoother than before. If you go back to the modifiers tab, you can see that you can increase the levels viewport, but I would not do that. Instead, I would shade the sphere smooth and let me show you how to do that. With the current sphere selected, we are going to right click and then we're going to click on shade smooth. And now it's smooth without any edges. I'm going to shade the sphere smooth and I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of the two other spheres. This could be a very good exercise for you, um, navigating to the modifiers and then right clicking to shade smooth and stuff like that. Now it's time to make the eyes. I'm going to make two flat oval eyes. And this is how I do it. Press Shift A to create a UV sphere. We are going to scale it down so it sort of resembles an eye shape. Drag it up. We are going to the modifiers tab and we are going to add a mirror modifier. With the sphere selected, we are going to edit mode. In edit mode, select everything by pressing A, then pull the red arrow to the right. The mirror modifier basically mirrors one side and reflects it on the other side. So there's essentially two spheres in this example. To make this sphere flat, we are going to scale it and we're going to scale it on the y-axis. So press S 
and y to scale it on the y-axis. You can stretch it and squeeze it. We are going to flatten our sphere. To make an oval shape, we are going to press S for scale, but we're not going to scale on the y-axis, we are going to scale on the z-axis. Now we are done the eyes, all we have to do is place them on the face. So select everything by pressing A, and then you can rotate it, you can scale it, you can do um, these actions to place it on the face. We're going to numpad 7, which is the top view, and we are going to press R for rotate and use the move tools to put the eyes onto the face. And now we are finished with the eyes. Now it's time to make the nose, the carrot nose. So I'm going to use a cube to create my carrot. Pressing shift A and clicking on cube. Bring it up and forward by using the move tools and resize it so it's the shape, well not the shape, but the size of a nose. We are going to edit mode. With the face selection on, click on the face that's not near the eyes. We are going to pull that face away from our snowman. And then we are going to scale it down like this. We are going to add a modifier. We're going to add a subdivision modifier to this mesh. In the Levels viewport, we're going to increase it to 2. As you can see, it sort of resembles a carrot. Now we're going to put loop cuts in our mesh. So we're going to click Ctrl R. We're going to click it and we're going to slide it up like this and click it again. Same thing with the other side. Doesn't that look more like a carrot now? We are going to increase the Levels viewport to 3 and now it's just like a carrot. Let's go back to object mode and using the move tools, we are going to place it in the middle of the face. We are done the modeling of the snowman. Now we're going to put some colors onto our snowman. You can go to the materials preview on the top right hand corner. Or you can press Z and this pie menu will show up and material preview is at the bottom. So click it. In the properties panel, if you click the circle icon, you will be presented to this material panel where you will be able to select the color, for example, of your mesh. The base color is basically the color of the mesh and what we'll be focusing on today. I'm going to choose a white-ish color for the snowman, like the body of the snowman. For the rest of the spheres, I do not need to create a new material. I can use the pre-existing one by pressing the small icon next to the new button. Now it's time to color the eyes. I'm just going to use like a black for this. And for the carrot, I'm just going to use a orange color. Doesn't really matter. You can have your carrot as like a purple color. Any color is fine. Now we are finished with coloring the snowman. All we have to do is to set up the scene and take the final image. Now we're going back to solid view and you can click it on the top right hand corner. We are going to create a backdrop. So click Shift A to create a cube. We are going to scale the cube up like this. Pull it up a little bit. We are going to edit mode to delete three of the faces.
So we are going to click on the top face, the front face, and the uh, right face. We are going to press X and click on faces to delete them. On the top of your viewport, there is a bar and there's a tab called shading. Click on that. For the background color, you're going to make it black because in reality, we can see things because of light. But without light, everything is just darkness. I will go to the rendered preview to show you what I mean. We are going to add a light, so press Shift A, go down and click on light, and we're going to add an area a light. As I pull the area light upwards, you can see that there is finally light on my snowman. Now let's position the uh, light by using the move tools. By pressing numpad 7, we are going to move it down. Another key thing to move here is the yellow dot. The dot right now is pointing down. We want the dot to be pointing at our snowman. That will give direction to our light. With the area light selected, we are going down to the light bulb icon. We're going to click it. We are going to change the size of the light. Also, you may want to change the power of the light to make it stronger or weaker. See what a difference it can make? It's time to set up the camera. Click on the camera and then press N on your keyboard. A sidebar will appear on the right hand side. On the right hand side, there is a tab called View. Click on that. Under view lock, there is this check mark that says camera to view. We are going to check that off. If the sidebar is obstructing the view of the camera, uncheck the camera to view. Pressing the shift key and the middle mouse button, you will be able to pan the camera around. And using the scroll button on your mouse, you are able to make the view smaller or larger. When you have settled with that specific angle, remember to uncheck the camera to view button. To change the size of the rendered image, on the properties panel, go to the photo printing icon. Under format, change the resolution to whatever you want it to be. I put mine as a square because I usually post my 3D renders to Instagram. So I'll leave it as a square and render it by clicking the render button and then render image. All you have to do is save the image once it's done rendering and you can post it on your Instagram now. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you're interested, I have another Blender tutorial about making a banker's lamp. It's a beginner tutorial of modeling the banker's lamp, so check it out. I also have this video right here where I show you the different views on Blender, like the top view, side view, bottom view, and much, much more. So I will leave those two videos in the card above me and also in the description box down below. I also have a few more Blender tutorials, so go to my channel if you're interested. I also do one-handed crocheting and knitting, and if you are interested in that or curious on how I do it, you should uh, click this playlist. I'll leave the playlist uh, in the card above me and in the description box down below. It's a four-part series of how I crochet with one hand. And I'm currently also doing the knitting series, so I also will put that playlist in the card above me. So check them all out. All the links will be, yeah, down below. 
I will be making more blender tutorials in the future and New Year's is coming and uh, I celebrate Chinese New Year's so a lot of uh, like Chinese New Year themed things will be on this channel so if you uh, don't want to miss out subscribe to my channel also subscribe to my channel if you want more blender tutorials and also hit the bell notification to get notified when I post a new blender tutorial don't forget to follow me on Instagram at HelenMillen3DArt. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you later. Bye!